Got the gas fire back out so I can start making this strap mount that I can get my drains on. Finish welding up the ammo box, which I just did. And do you guys think it's sealed up? We'll find out, I just finished. It should be uh, nice and full of smoke. Oh yeah. Now I can take and blow that hole out. Now that's finally finished. And I gotta get that guy welded on. So I just rough those out with the plasma cutter. Um, this one over here I knew was going to be sort of an issue because the way I mounted the box sitting down on the edge of the drum, the bottom of the drum actually goes up inside right here and I did pop through in this corner so I'm going to have to go through and fill that back in. But I just wanted to rough it out now I'm going to go in probably with a grinder and just clean up all the edges, make it so that, that char can slip right out. Go through and clean up this edge as well take it right back to the frame so I've got full length to get my arm in there because I'll have to access all the bolts over here for the uh, heat exchanger. One of the last things we need to do before the bottom barrel is what I would consider to be completed. Um, we need a way to monitor the temperature of the gases coming out of the bottom barrel. So right about here is where the grate will sit and we want to monitor the temperature as the gases are coming out uh, watching for high temperatures, running out of wood, issues, leaks. Good instrumentation is well worth it in a gas fire. It tells you a lot of what's going on. So with the Pro Sport gauges that I already have installed in the truck, it comes with a little EGT probe. So I picked out where I want to monitor my gases more towards the top of the heat exchanger standoff. I figure obviously heat rises, I'm going to get a pretty good reading right there. But here's where I want it to be, so I'm going to go ahead and knock out a hole there. Here I took a 5 16 nut, drilled it out 21 64 retapped it for 8th inch NPT. That guy will get welded down right there. That gives us our place to mount the EGT probe, which this just uses a compression fitting. A little brass guy there, and an adapter. This is our 8th inch NPT. So this guy will get in there, this will get cranked down on top of it. I'm going to face this um, I'm gonna get back on there. straight down because the cooling rail is right about here so I can suck this up nice and tight. It's going to come straight underneath the rail. The wires will be right at frame height basically and I can run them along the frame rail right up into the cab, hook them up. Call me paranoid, but I like to have good threads, and every time you weld something that's that thin of wall, it'll distort the threads a little bit, so I just go back through and chase it. Then we got our thread and adapter. Beauty. That's just about it for the bottom barrel. Everything is fully welded up. I guess now I can get it clean and get some paint slapped on it. And what we just did right there to mount the EGT probe, that's a lot higher temperature. That's why the EGT goes there. For the hopper, we need to mount a coolant temp sensor for the other gauge, and that guy is going to be right below that little dent. That'll be behind the cab where I'll get a really good reading that's not going to be interfered with by wind cooling down the side of the hopper. Also it's direct line of sight to the nozzles that will be in the bottom of the fire tube, so I'll get the most accurate reading. As soon as I run out of wood and the charcoal is exposed, it's going to immediately radiate that heat. Hit that temperature probe, it'll light up the gauges, let me know it's time to stop, get some more wood. There's in. the hopper temp probe, or excuse me, um, crossover temp probe, all set up. See it poking through right there in the corner, be right in the nice in the gas flow. And then the hopper temp <clears throat> probe, I actually did a little bit different, I just knocked out the hole, tapped it, 
Um, the sheet metal is too thin for holding threads and I knew that. So I took, right up here under the gutter. Come on, where are you? There it is. I took an old brass nut and threaded that and a little skiff of silicone on the back side. So that's done. And I got that piece of strapping across the frame rail. I'm actually not gonna add strapping through here, two reasons. I don't want to cover up this rivet that holds the two pieces of frame together and this cross member. And also there's a slight rise in the frame rail right in this area. So this would be a really funky bend piece to get in there to add a whole lot of work but not a whole lot of support. This is going to encapsulate it just fine. Let's get that done. I got a hopper drain, just a piece of two inch pipe. And I knocked out an inch and three quarter hole inside. And I'm gonna go back in with a carbon burr and clean it up. It looks like it's sitting crooked, but I actually intended for that. I wanted it to kind of follow the body line just a little bit and kind of kick in. Also, because the tar tank is sloped this way, it kind of levels out with this being just a little bit tilted. And it's just a degree or two. I just eyeballed it. And I gotta wait till the bed comes off for the last time to weld the backside. <laughs> I can't get the welder into that gap. Less than my finger. All right, what am I doing next? In the thought of protecting the gasket for this plate, I added some eighth inch walls just to the inside so it still slips in. It'll also help me um, when there's a cross member right here, guide it into place. And it'll kind of sit there while I'm getting the bolt started. Then I went ahead and just cut out just a square gasket and laid it on a board, ran the drill bit through, tried to get the cleanest holes I could in the gasket. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's ready to be painted and bolted on. Um, went to tractor supply last night, picked up some springs to cut down for the hopper and a piece of pipe we put in for the liquid condensate drain in the hopper tank. Let's do that next. CS4s, these are 3 8 diameter. I would have preferred CS6s, which are a half inch. That's what I used on my last truck. But these will do. They're about 16 inches long. So, I'm going to mark it five and a quarter. Cut it off try and line it up to how I separate it. I leave two coils, pinch it just enough to open it up, flip my pliers around just to hold it, pair of needle nose, bend it up 90 degrees and we got two eyelets, nice little stiff spring. We got a couple more of these to do end up with nine springs total. These are going to be what holds the puffer lid uh, on the hopper. So I'm going to go ahead and finish making these up. Got a three quarter bolt locked in the vise. Some number nine tie wire or snareman's wire as I've referred to it. Give that a little half wrap, form a little loop. Three quarter bolt makes this radius fit on top of a barrel lid real nice. And your first one is kind of feel it out what you think, what feels good. I use my first one that I make and turn it into my template so I know where I need to grab the next one. Just about right there. Any old pair of pliers that's got a reasonably thin jaw. 90 degrees. 
180. Leave about a half inch or so tag. Cut it off. Grab one of your springs, thread it on there. Crimp it closed. There's one of your mounts. This will get mounted down on the side of the hopper. This will loop over the top of the barrel lid and keep it cinched down. And that's about how those guys will sit on there. You can see it just loops over the top of the lid. Down here, we've got an eyelet for our attachment point. Wayne's used uh, bolts. He's used um, fencing staples. I usually just take a nail and weld it in a couple spots, bend it out 90 degrees, and loop the spring over the top of the head. Then if I ever need to, for whatever reason, pull the lid off, pull this off, and it'll swing down and it'll lay in place. Or if I need to, I can unhook the bottom of it and pull the whole spring off, which I don't do very often. But that will act to hold down the lid. But the nail and the welding is going to have to wait because I'm just about out of memory. So uh, see you guys in the next episode.